NPC campaign train bets in Adamawa and Taraba states. Traditional leaders in Adamawa endorsed President Buhari and observers in the forthcoming elections urged to make observations that would help deepen democracy in Nigeria. A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to News Panorama from the Benin Network Center. I'm Ogoch Kuka Ona. The Adamawa State Council of Emirs and Chiefs has described the next level movement being championed by President Muhammad Buhari as the most critical pathway towards sustaining the growth and development of Nigeria for a greater future. Chairman of the Council and Lamido of Adamawa, Dr. Muhammadu Barkindo Aliu Mustafa, who stated this while formally endorsing the second term bid of the president who paid him homage on the council members. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. No one can deny the fact that Adamawa, the land of beauty, is a synergy of all eyes as the forthcoming general elections draw closer. As the home state of the leading opposition candidate Atiku Abubakar, expectations are that the sweeping power of the broom may have its potency weakened, but this is not the case. The enthusiastic love and affection for President Muhammad Buhari by the people of Adamawa is to say the least beyond politics. And if you must know, this is the birthplace of the president's wife, Aisha Buhari, and the governing APC is where almost everyone that matter in the politics of Adamawa now belongs. <laughs> on hand to receive the president at the Formina Palace of the Adamawa Emirate where paramount traditional rulers from across the state led by Lamido Formina, Dr. Muhammad Ubarkindo Ali Mustafa. Speaking on their behalf, the Lamido described as fulfilling and reassuring the revolutionary initiatives of the Buhari presidency which he said can only be sustained for greater impact through continuity. I would therefore like to use this opportunity on behalf of my humble self members of my council and the entire people of Adamawa to acknowledge with immeasurable thanks and congratulate you on keeping faith with the contract you entered with our people and indeed Nigerians. Mr. President, there is no doubt that much has been achieved during your present tenure, but certainly you need more time to actualize your dream for a better Nigeria. This therefore calls for all and sundry to rally around you and allow you to get to the next level to enable you to consolidate the various laudable programs of your party. Being the Commander-in-Chief, if necessary, I will read the right act to the law enforcement agencies about making sure that people are respected, they are allowed to go and vote who they like across the parties. I assure the Lamido that uh, I value that because we are people who benefited from free and fair election. The Buhari passion was also rekindled in Taraba State, the nature's gift to the nation. This is where the governing APC is actualizing the 3,050 megawatts Mambila hydropower project abandoned for decades in spite of its significant benefits to the socio-economic development of the state and the country. Consequently, the major road in Jalingo, the state capital, was therefore overflowed by sea of humanity with a mission to show love, affection, appreciation Association and indeed commitment to the Broom Revolution as the president came calling. The presence of Governor Darius Ishaku of the PDP notwithstanding, the Taraba State Council of Traditional Rulers endorsed the re-election bid of President Muhammad Buhari, which they attributed to his credibility, good intentions, sense of pity for the less privileged, selflessness in service, and continued sacrifice for a greater Nigeria. We have given you your trust, and in the four years, we are witnesses that you have kept the trust. 
This country now is in dear needs of people who are out to make sacrifices as you do. Nigeria must be corrected and must be corrected now and you are the right person to do it. President Muhammad Buhari, who acknowledged the show of public support, reassured the people of Taraba that their fate in the governing APC will never be in vain. The Broom Revolution has so far been reinforced in 29 states of the Nigerian Federation. Adam Musambu, NTA News. And President Mohamed Buhari says the only way to guarantee his re-election in the February 16 polls is for citizens to come out en masse to vote for APC and stay to protect their votes until results are announced. The president re-emphasized this during the APC presidential campaign in Taraba State. Political correspondent Salihu Abdullahi monitored the rally. Overwhelming describes the reception of the APC presidential campaign team by the people of Taraba State. Ah! And party faithful say this is a clear demonstration of the people's ah! desire for a new leadership under the platform of all progressives congress in the state. Party stalwarts extol the focused leadership of President Muhammad Buhari within his first tenure, making reference to the revival of critical infrastructure like the Mambila Hydropower Station, which has boosted economic activities within the state. The, the president has directed us to do railway up to Jalingu and do the railway from Potakot to Meduguri to Damatru to Pronu. Everywhere we have gone to, even traditional rulers on their own acknowledge what has been done and they are requesting for more. President Muhammad Buhari says his re-election bid is necessary to build on the solid foundation his administration has laid for all-round development of the country. There is nothing I want to say that the previous speakers have not said, but the most important is the construction of the dam here in Taraba State. State, the Mambila Hydroelectric Dam and the ongoing road construction, then the issue of power is also important to enable small businesses thrive. Taraba was not different as the APC received defectors from the opposition PDP including some serving members of the Taraba State Executive. <laughs> It was the same scenario in Yola, the Adamawa state capital, where people came out en masse to receive the APC presidential campaign team as it continued to woo voters in the northeast. Party faithful applauded the peace being enjoyed across the state in the zone, alongside ongoing infrastructural development indicative of the commitment and selfless leadership of Buhari administration. We want a powerful president this time. We want a president with a clear majority to take majority in the Senate. President Muhammad Buhari said government policies are directly impacting on the people in line with the promise made in 2015 and that his desire for re-election is to enable him do more if given the mandate. But in we will continue to build roads, rail lines and make portable water available affordable health care, if we are re-elected, we also continue to build on the success. They were formally received and party flags presented to the candidates. Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari has expressed sadness over the loss of lives at the APC presidential rally in Jalingo, Taraba State. In a statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Garba Shew, President Buhari says he feels very sad and distressed when ordinary Nigerians who love him and his party because of what they stand for and have done make personal sacrifices by taking the pains to show their support and their lives end tragically. While commiserating with the families of the victims and the APC family, President Muhari calls for restraints on the parts of the supporters to avoid such tragic incidents and improve crowd management at rally grounds. And still on election matters, 
former Liberian president and head of the ECOWAS Observer Mission, Ellen Johnson Salif, has concluded a two days visit to Nigeria ahead of the general elections, holding meetings with the national chairman of the APC, Adam Soshomale, PDP presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, and other key players in the electoral process. Dennis Adeguloye has more. The former Liberian president who is heading the ECOWAS election observer mission held talks with the national chairman of the APC, Adams Oshomole. The APC national chairman thanked the former Liberian president for taking the time to contribute her quota in deepening the core values of democracy, which include free, fair and credible elections. Whatever you observe, if there's anything you think we can do differently as a political party, as Nigerians, to ensure that um, we have, uh, we continue to be an example to other countries. Uh, you have partners in us as APC. I've been asked by ECOWAS to head that mission. I'm honored to be able to do that and to serve Nigeria in any way. After an exchange of pleasantries, she also held talks with PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar. <laughs> and the PDP national chairman, Uche Sekundus. The election must be free, must be fair, must be credible. Interactions continued thereafter behind closed doors. In Abuja, Dennis Adignoy, NT News. We now take a break. Panorama continues shortly. Please stay. Yes, he be like say they want to tell us another story again, yo. Now so, you know say people they say I the superstar, but for me, the real superstars are those people where they go vote for the candidate of their choice without violence. So for this upcoming election, be my superstar. Vote, no fights, no violence, because the election will be won. We work together so the future will be brighter. Thank you for staying tuned. Politicians have been implored to be more interested in the development of Nigeria and Nigerians rather than the desperation to occupy elective offices. This was the position of former President Goodluck Jonathan and former Head of State General Abdul Salam Abubakar at a peace conference in Abuja organized by the Goodluck Foundation. Timothy Yusuf reports. Peace on records that despite the marked improvement in the processes of democratic nations, election-related violence have continued to be experienced in many African nations, Nigeria inclusive, often to the detriment of peaceful coexistence, economic growth and sustainable development. It is in view of this that the Good Luck Jonathan Foundation, in line with its mission of consolidating democracy and peaceful political transitions in Africa, convened the peace conference for key stakeholders to dialogue and consider strategies for sustaining the peace that Nigeria enjoyed in the aftermath of the last presidential elections. For a nation to develop, conflict must be minimized. And we charge our political leaders to be more interested in how we improve the quality of life of our people. Nigeria is the cornerstone of the security of West Africa. Former President Jonathan's words that his ambition does not worth the blood of any Nigerian dominated discussions with a call on the political class to avoid making elections a do-or-die affair. This gentleman called Good Luck Avelic Jonathan kept his word that his presidency is not worth the blood of any Nigerian. And there is a sense in which actually for ordinary poor people Violence is an the conference had at its theme peaceful elections and national development in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. And still on election matters, preparations have been concluded ahead of the general elections as INEC, security, election observers, and political parties meet to seal all aspects of the process. Mayor Gidi was at the stakeholders' meeting held in Abuja. Political activities are heightened. The parties are busy selling their manifestos to the electorate, while those in charge of election administration are also not resting on their oars as they continue to fine-tune their last-minute preparations. 
to ensure an all-inclusive process, all key actors are gathered there to interact. First was the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, who told the gathering that movement of electoral materials and personnel will start by 5.30 a.m. on Saturday morning to the various pulling units, and all the means of transportation will be deployed in order to ensure that the materials arrive at the pulling units latest before 7.30. On election observation, 143 observers have been accredited, 119 local observers, and 28 international observers. They are observers. They are not monitors of our election. International observers in the EU, in particular, wish to stress our impartiality. We are here to support no particular candidate, but to support a democratic process. On the collection of permanent voters' card that ends on Friday. We also learned that much of the complaint is coming from those who have damaged or de defensed PVCs, the required replacement, as well as those who applied for transfer and relocation. is going to meet today and where it is necessary will review the arrangement for the collection of PVCs. On the area of security, the acting inspector general of police made it point blank that flashpoints have been identified, pulling units checked and three security personnel to man each pulling unit. No security personnel at any pulling unit is allowed to carry firearms, food vendors not allowed and no erection of tent as well as security personnel are not allowed to escort very important persons on election day. Uh, security. The tactical unit, over 24,000 mobile police personnel will be deployed. 4,000 counter-terrorism personnel will be deployed. And about 8,000 special protection unit personnel will be deployed. And we are clear on where we are coming from and where we want to go. I want to reassure each and every Nigerian that you will be allowed to exercise your civic responsibilities in an atmosphere devoid of intimidation or inhibition. Resident electoral commissioners were also on ground to address questions that concern their respective states. Mie Ogidi. NTNs. And a report just reaching us indicate that an INEC has extended PVC collection to Monday 11th of February, including Saturdays and Sundays from 9 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening daily. And now moving on, the Coalition of Associations of Persons Living with Disabilities is seeking more inclusiveness in the forthcoming elections. This they express through a sensitization rally to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Steve Luna and Okolo covered that of a those state championed by a group, Access Nigeria. With two-thirds of Nigerians' population living with one form of disability or the other, the campaign by Access Nigeria to ensure that this percentage of people are included in elections becomes imperative. It is in furtherance of this objective that the Coalition of Association of Persons with Visible Disabilities sensitizes the public and INEC to include them in the forthcoming elections in the country. The associations which comprise NAVID, Jonapid, amongst others, walked through Rama Park to INEC headquarters Benin to submit their request to the management and to commend INEC for its efforts so far in the provision of magnifying glasses and bread ballot guards for the impaired and abinos to use during elections. INEC has taken steps to some degree to make elections inclusive for people with disabilities. INEC is most responsive. While we applaud them, we want to call on the Independent National Electoral Commission to make voting more accessible for those on wheelchair, the wheelchairers, and those that use clutches. I'm, a, I'm happy that I'm part of those that came to appreciate INEC for what they have done for physically challenged persons. I'm very happy for what INEC have done. 
to be able to include us this election that is coming. INEC, before now, they have not been paying attention to persons with disabilities. But now, I'm happy with what they are doing for the persons with disability in the election process. INEC is all about inclusiveness. The Commission has taken the various steps to make sure that people living with disability are included in our activities. It is, however, the expectation of this group of people that there are no barriers created for them to exercise their franchise in the forthcoming general elections. From the INET headquarters here in Benin City, Steve Lona in Waukulu, NTA News. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has suspended its three months industrial action effective from Friday 8, February 2019. ASU and federal government has tra have trashed out all the eight contending issues that led to the university strike that started on the 4th of November 2018. Following a careful review of the report of engagements with the federal government on proposals for addressing all outstanding issues in the 2013 MOU and 2017 MOA, NEC resolved that the current strike action by the union should be suspended conditionally with effect from 12.01 a.m. on Friday 8 February 2019. We take another break. Sports is next. Yes, it be like say they want to tell us another story again, yo. Now so, you know say if you they say I be superstar, but for me, the real superstars are those people where they go vote for the candidate of their choice without violence. So for these upcoming elections, be my superstar. Vote, no fight, no violence, because the election will be won. We work together so the future will be brighter. Nigeria has retained her fourth position in Africa, but dropped two places from her previous position in the rankings released by the Federation of International Football Association, FIFA, Thursday. Nigeria also retained her 1,427 1, points from the previous list in December. In first ranking for the year, Qatar climbed to 55th position in the world, gaining 38 places and reaching their best position since 1993. Japan also soared up to 23 from 27th, Korea up 15 from 38, United Arab Emirates up 12 from 67. Jordan, 12 from 97, Iraq from 80 to number 8, and Iran from 7 to 22. The Asian Football Federation is now represented by four teams up, one on the last edition and stands level with Africa, whose numbers have depleted by the Democratic Republic of Congo's dropouts. Meanwhile, Senegal retained their top sports among CAF teams, with 1,505 points and 24th in the world with Tunisia following closely with 1,493 points on the 28th place. Behind is Morocco from 40 to the 43rd place. The next rankings will be published April 4th. And that's Panorama today from the Benin Network Center. Thank you for watching. Do have a good afternoon. Thank <laughs> you.